Hi there, welcome back. Um, that crackle glaze that we did yesterday is now dried overnight. Uh, you can see it there shining on there. So this is the uh, the day full of trepidation and jeopardy. Uh, today we're going to do the crackle and, and hope that it crackles. It's always a bit hit and miss, so we'll see how we go on. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to mask off uh, the original book spine um, just so we don't get any of the paint that we're going to put on top on it. I'm just going to use this uh, where is it? frog tape low tack again so we don't pull any of the I mean that's a kind of a cloth cover so it's not really to pull that off um, but if it was painted or paper you don't want too much so I'm just going to again Put it on my t-shirt, get rid of some of the tack uh, and just put it down that edge. I don't need to push it down and adhere it too much. It's only in case I bit, get a bit carried away. Now the paint I'm going to use is a cream coloured one. Uh, it's actually a, a furniture paint. It looks more sort of grey than cream on camera but it's it's a cream. Uh, those that have been watching long enough will remember I'd painted a uh, a bureau and put some Edith Aldous wallpaper on and that's the colour that we used so we know it's a good match for Edith. Uh, you could use emulsion, acrylic, any sort of paint you want. Uh, and the way that it works is we put the paint on, the moisture in the paint that goes on the top moistens the crackle layer and then as it dries the crackle dries quicker than the paint on top and that's what pulls it apart and creates the cracks. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll I use generally I apply it with a sponge um, just because it stops you overworking it. If you're using a brush you tend to sort of go backwards and forwards and if you do that it will stop the crackle working because the first layer of moisture will loosen the crackle and then when you go over it again it drags all the crackle about and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So I always find using a sponge is the easier way to do it. We're going to just open up the paint. I've decanted it from the tin into a little plastic container to make it easy to handle for the live. Uh, we're going to do this panel first and you know we'll pray to the crackle gods and hope for the best so here we go so i'm going to load up some paint on me sponge fair fair amount of paint because i want i want to get it on quick and not overwork it uh, so i'm just going to go and uh, pop it on there As you see you can put it on down quite quick uh, without kind of overworking dragging the crackle glaze because we're coming down at it and dabbing it on the crackle medium is not moving underneath uh, you won't see anything happen immediately it's not an instant process which is always a bit worrying at this point because you think oh it should have done something by now surely but that's not the case just get some get a good layer of paint on there because it's the moisture in that top layer that activates the crackle medium. Show sure that's down. Pop it into there. We get in there now. Nearly fun it. So the odds, I think at the moment, are 50-50 whether it's going to do anything. So there we go, that's that layer on now. Uh, and as you can see, not a lot's happening. And I find it's usually best just to leave it a little while, just to let that moisture get into the crackle layer. And then what I'm going to do is apply some heat. Uh, and if you apply heat from a heat gun, you tend to get larger cracks. Uh, just see little bits happening here and there but not too much uh, so we're going to do that now I'm just going to pop my lid back on my paint because I don't want to 
dry that out and get hard bits in it. Uh, and here we go. Let's uh, hope for the best and expect the worst. Yeah, you can see them going now. Look, look at that. I can see crackle coming my way. say if you if you dry it naturally you, you, it does crackle but you tend to get smaller cracks I want these to be quite visible so that's why I'm applying some heat um, in areas where I've put the paint on a bit thicker it takes a little more drying out to get it to go uh, but hopefully you can see that starting now to come together Getting some nice bits of crackle forming. Mm, I think that's not too looking too bad now. So I'll now take the heat off. There's still areas that are still damp and that's fine. They can dry on their own and hopefully develop some smaller cracks as well. But there we go, that was reasonably successful I think. Uh, let me lift it up for you so you can see a bit closer. There we go, there's reasonable amounts of, of crackle. Uh, you can see in the areas in between there's some smaller ones developing. Uh, and that will, uh, for want of a better word, mature as we move along. Now, flush with that success, uh, I shall move along and do another one for you. Just to hopefully prove that it wasn't an entire fluke. Let me move my stabilising boxes along underneath. I've just got a box underneath just to support it uh, and it just raises it up so that when I go with the paint it doesn't go all over the table and then I'd end up having to clean it and explain to Miss P why a desk has suddenly become dirty. I'm going to peel that off now. That's finished with that side. I'm going to just turn it around and put the same painted edge down along that edge. Doesn't have to be stuck down really tight. It's really in case, just in case I wander over with a sponge like I did in those areas. Uh, and we'll bring the paint back. Pop that there. Again, pick some goodly amounts up on me sponge. I mean, you can do this all in one go if you feeling brave I'll just do it a panel at a time for now um, I might do these two because that's going straight over the top of that new spine that we made so I might just do that in two together and see how we end up get some paint down again just using an up and down motion so that I'm not pushing any crackle medium around. I want it to stay where it is. Lots of paint. Once this is uh, dried I'll be sanding it uh, and then sealing it prior to the decoupage. I'll leave this probably to dry overnight uh, and then I'll video again the, the decoupage. Join these two videos together so when you watch it it shall be seamless going from one to the other. Um, but, but it has had plenty of time 
I've allowed to, for it to dry. Just open up that hinge a bit so I can get a bit into there. There we go. Move along the next one. Do over the spine. Do you remember that this is uh, got some brown packing tape over the top of our grey board uh, and then it's got a layer of green paint and then the crackle glaze over. I don't think I put any into the actual creases um, because you can be a bit prone to flaking off if you put too much in there but I have put the, the cream paint in but I don't think there's any crackle medium underneath it. Normally I'd probably do this standing up so I was coming down on it. This makes it slightly easier to see what you're doing. But you don't want to see the back of my head when you want to see the crackle. And I'm going to stop there because I need to put some tape on this one. And now we've got to there. Before we get too carried away. It's easy to forget these things as you go. So we started to crackle there. You'll see at the other end it's had a bit longer. That uh, top layer now, the cream paint has moistened the uh, crackle medium underneath. And so it started to do what it's going to do. As I say, if we dry it with the uh, heat gun, we get some nice larger crackles, uh, which I think is what we want uh, to have in a sort of even. So that's where we started, but we'll uh, warm this up again. Uh, and then we'll do that one. By the time we get to that one, that will again have soaked in as well the lid on my paint, stop drying out the top layer. Sorry for the noise. You see them, you can see them cracked instantly as soon as you start applying a little bit of heat. And uh, now it's been moistened properly. Uh, it's definitely in the mood for going. I feel quite brave to do this on camera because, as I say, crackle can be a bit hit and miss. Uh, but this isn't my first crackle. So you have to be brave and just go for it. Can you see that now? That's still uh, quite moist that side, that's more dried out now, but I've left it for them smaller cracks to develop on their own. Uh, and then we'll start on this one. And you can see it uh, starts to go quite quick. The more times you do crackle, you'll find out sort of the optimum amount of paint to put down to get just the effect you want. And knowing when to stop applying the heat as well, because you can, if you're not careful, you can start the paint to, to bubble up because it's effectively a hot gun that you would use to strip paint. So it's a sort of optimum time. I mean, these don't give out as much heat as a, a paint stripper would, but they still give enough out to, to make the paint start to bubble up if you're not careful. So there we go. I think that's those middle section done I think that's looking quite nice wow that's lovely 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lee. Good job. Good job, Bob. Oh, that was obviously the biggest loser, isn't it? Good job, Bob. Yeah. Uh, right, let's uh, move that along then and flushed again with our success. We'll uh, attempt the other side, the last panel. And then, as I said, what I'll do is I'll put this to one side, let it have a really good dry, think about whether it wants to crackle any more under its own steam. Uh, and then I shall, tomorrow, we shall tackle the even more nerve wracking decoupage. Because, uh, of course, as we all know, things can go wrong with decoupage. And, of course, at this stage, we've put a lot of work in. Uh, I'll just pause you there and I'll get you the, the, the sealant that I'm going to put on this once it's dried before we do the decoupage. So I'll just pause you for a second there. There we go back. Yes, yeah, so this is what I'm going to use to, to seal the top. Uh, it's a product made by Polyvine. It's a wax finish varnish, uh, and it, it, as it says there, it's dead flat finish. So it self levels, it's really, really smooth. Uh, it, you, as it says here, you bookshelves, new wood furniture, doors, staircases, wooden MDF, fire surrounds, and kitchen cabinets. It says nothing about junk journals, but you know, hey ho. Uh, and you brush it on, or use a sponge brush, brush uh, and apply it, I think, drying times one to two hours. You can put two coats on if you want, but in this instance I'll only be using one because it's not going to be going outdoors, I don't think. Uh, and that, that will then seal that crackle layer uh, and give me a sort of a nice base for the decoupage to sit on. Um, and it will allow some sort of movement because it'll be sealed. Uh, if I put it straight on there and I needed to just adjust or pull out a crease in the decoupage, it, it could easily stick to the paint because the, it would have soaked in. The decoupage medium right then so right last one get me paint again i'm only showing you that finish because when once this is dry before i go to bed tonight i shall apply uh, one coat of that overnight and then that will all be sealed in ready for tomorrow's epic decoupage session so, right, let me get me brew, me sponge, get some more paint, get lots on. And away we go for the last time. Sometimes when you're doing one of these like four panel books or whatever, the way you apply the paint gets more efficient and you get more used to it. And if you're not careful, you can end up with a, a different effect on one end because you've sort of perfected your technique. So it's best to try not learn too much as you go along. <laughs> try and repeat whatever you did on the first one. Repeat it all the way over. A little bit of variation is fine because often, you know, you won't see the journal often spread out like this. This side, you'll be normally operating it on the inside, and that's Miss P's domain. So as soon as this is finished, she will uh, start working on her ideas for filling the inside. Uh, obviously, she'll be using some of her uh, Edith ephemera that she made using the pages, and be using more pages from the Edith Olden Country Diary and maybe even some from the Nature Journal. There we go. I think we can probably remove that tape that end and remove the tape that end. As you see, it's not a particularly straight line this end, but what I do is use the same paint, uh, get a paintbrush, and then I mask it off again and put a nice neat line down either sides of both of the original spines. Uh, and what I also do is I'll do the edges along there, down the sides, along the bottom and each end. Uh, I shall also do them in the same cream so that it all has a nice harmonious finish. 
right so there we go that's the paint covered up that's it so we'll just eat gun for the last time out for the best for the last time we terribly if it all went wrong now wouldn't it i can just see just see it starting to crack now which is a good indication that that paint has moistened the crackle medium underneath so that's a good time to start thinking about applying a little bit of heat so excuse the noise worked very well so there we go that's the crackle i've stopped applying heat well i can still just see a little bit of shine left to it a bit of wetness so that hopefully it will develop its own smaller uh, finer lines as it dries if we were to go back to that first very first one you can see look look just around the edges look there it's just developed its own little finer lines as well as those nice large ones uh, and they do develop over time if you leave just a little bit of moisture left in the paint just for it to, to carry on doing what it's doing just focus again that's it uh, so there we go that's now going to be laid to one side left uh, probably uh, it's five o'clock in the evening here now just before bedtime uh, i shall give that a coat of the polyvine wax finish it leaves a lovely sort of it's, it, all finishes have a slight gloss but it's it's very flat there is a little bit of shine but it is very flat um but it does leave it looking like it's had a sort of a wax a wax finish uh and it it's it's my go-to varnish because uh, it really does give it a lovely lovely waxy look finish like you've hand polished it uh so there we go um so join me tomorrow when uh, well you'll be joining me in about three seconds because i'm going to add it on to the end but let's imagine that it's tomorrow and i'll be doing the decoupage uh, and we'll have one on each of the large panels and one on the new spine so thank you very much for joining me uh, don't forget to subscribe to miss paint lots youtube channel so you get uh, a ping every time a new video gets up uh, you, you don't get any other messages at all. It just lets you know when there's a new video or live gone up on the channel. So thank you very much and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Well, hello. welcome back after that very short break for you. It's actually been uh, overnight for me. I've slept well. Um, let us have a look at the uh, crackle, which is now fully finished drying and whoop, there we go there's one page inside of the others let's open it out fully and we can have a look at all four of them there we go we've got some nice large cracks we've got some nice smaller cracks and there we go so there we go i would say that's as without wanting to be boastful as good a crackle as i think you'll probably get uh, there's a few simple rules to that uh, as you know we put the crackle medium on relatively thickly but we put it on quickly um, we put it on uh, a nice thick ish uh, and just put it on up and down up and down got it covered without messing with it too much we didn't overwork it we just put it on and we left it to dry overnight once it was fully dry we came back the next day 
and we applied the cream paint on the top. Um, we applied that with a sponge so that we were sort of positing it on rather than putting it on with a brush when you're sort of sweeping backwards and forwards and you tend to overwork the, mat, uh, the crackle medium. Uh, again we put it on relatively thickly uh, but not too thickly. It's all a case of experimentation. All crackle mediums are different, all substrates are different, all people are different. Uh, so if you're going to do it on a big project I'd have a little practice first to make sure you get the, the crackle that you like. Uh, once we'd put the uh, cream paint on, as, as we know, the, it's the moisture within the paint that reactivates the crackle layer. So put it on without overworking it again, pass it up and down with a sponge, and if you leave that until that, the moisture starts to uh, affect the crackle underneath, and you'll just see some tiny little cracks appear. Uh, if you were to leave it at that point, it would carry on cracking and you'd have some very fine cracks like these, perhaps these ones in this sort of area here along that side um, and, and it would be like that all over. If you want these larger cracks, when you first see it start to crack is to apply some heat and if you apply the heat as we showed, as you just saw earlier in this video, uh, you get some much larger cracks appear. Now the secret again is, is to eat it enough till you get the large cracks appear and, and you're happy with it and at that point stop. Don't fully dry that paint because that, it, that, that'll be it finished. If you eat it enough so you've got the large cracks appear but it's still moist, if you then leave it overnight then these smaller ones will develop on their own. Uh, if you fully dry it that won't happen because there'll be no moisture left to activate the uh, crackle medium layer. Uh, and there we go, that's what we end up with, which I think most people I think would agree that is a very reasonable crackle. Uh, some other little things that I did, whilst uh, it was the evening, uh, you'll notice that I've just finished off the edges, uh, just either side of the original spines, just to give them a nice straight edge. Again I just used a little bit of the low tack masking tape, uh, and a, a paintbrush and touch, touch them in so we end up with a nice sort of tidy edges to the original spines. Once that was fully dry then what I did was apply a layer of sealant over the top uh, which I showed you earlier which is this wax finish varnish by Polyvine. Um, you just put it on either with the brush I use a, a sponge uh, applicator uh, the reason is that if you use a sponge applicator you can't possibly get brush marks because you're not using a brush. Uh, and it's very easy to go up and down and see where you've done because it's nice and wide, it's about two inches wide and you don't need many passes to do it. Uh, and then you leave that to dry, it dries nice and flat. As you can see there's, there's no, not much of a sheen on that um, but it does have a lovely feel to it. It does indeed. So there we go, that's that stage finished. So now we have the uh, excitement of doing some decoupage. And at this point, of course, things could go horribly wrong. Now the decoupage I'm gonna use is I've got some images. Uh, like those two, the iris and the foxglove. As I mentioned earlier, they, they came off the uh, CD, the Joanna Sheen, it's the Joanna Sheen version of the Country Diary Edwardian and it's got two CDs in it, one for spring and summer and one for autumn winter and, and it contains all the images on there. I, I think I've actually got about two spare copies of that so Miss P will probably put them up for sale in a Etsy shop, first come first served uh, and we'll send them off to whoever would like a copy. Uh, if you're ever hunting round for the Country Driver and Roaring Lady CDs, there's also a company called Crafters Companion that make a set, um, but th in my humble opinion they're far uh, inferior to the Joanna Sheen ones. The images on the Joanna Sheen are, are much more useful and, and user friendly shall we say. Uh, so I'd try and stick to the Joanna Sheen version if I was you. So. The images are on this CD. Let me get the out of it. 
As you can see, there is. Uh, let me find one. No, look, say on the CD itself, there's the image of the, of the blue tits, uh, and it's also got another bird with it, and there's some grasses and whatever. Now I didn't want those for ours, uh, so what I did was I put the image into uh, Microsoft Word and removed the background. So it removed all the I removed all the extraneous stuff that I didn't actually require. Uh, let me bring that one in and you'll see. Uh, there we go. Uh, so I, I digitally fussy cut it, if you like. I took away everything around the outside that I didn't need so that I was just left with the images. And it was the same with these ones and the grass and the poppies. Uh, the poppies has a lot of other flowers growing up the side of it and grasses through it. And I just purely wanted the poppies. So I digitally fuzzy cut them and then what I've done is print them on tissue paper. It's just sort of ordinary tissue paper that you might buy for uh, wrapping things up. Um, it's printed on an inkjet uh, and what I do is I attach a piece of tissue paper to a carrier sheet using a little bit of masking tape across the top uh, and then that feeds in that way, turns it over and prints on there. Uh, once I'd printed those out, I left them to dry overnight again, and then I took a, a dry iron to them. Uh, put them on the iron board, got the iron uh, at a hot heat, turned the steam off, and just ironed them. And, and it heat sets the ink into the tissue paper. So now when we do the decoupage, even though it's an inkjet, the colours won't move. They're sort of more permanent, if you like, now that the heat set. Uh, so the next step after that, once you've got those printed out, is I've uh, tore them out uh, as close to the sort of images as I could, getting as raggedy as edge as I want because I didn't want any straight lines. I wouldn't use scissors. I tore them by hand. Uh, and that's basically what you end up with. And there, what we're going to decoupage onto the covers. Uh, and we've got this nice long thin one there, which is going to go down that new spine that we created in the middle of the two books. Um, and that's enough waffling. Let's get on and do some decoupaging and hope for the best. So I'm going to use, I'm going to do the blue tits first. I'm going to place it approximately where I want it. Uh, might bring them round just like that and perhaps bring them in, going across at a bit of an angle, a bit of a jaunty angle uh, and doesn't that look nice next to the next to the crackle. Now with this tissue paper generally when you decoupage it down because it's slightly thicker than say a, a napkin which tends to disappear totally you'll probably see a little bit of that, the white of the tissue paper afterwards. But what we'll do is we'll get the same paint as we did there and we'll just paint around the edges and give it a bit of an halo effect and it'll make that white disappear and it'll ground them birds well and truly onto the front of that cover. The matte medium that I'm going to be using, or the decoupage medium, is this uh, Winsor & Newton Artist Acrylic matte medium. Uh, it is as it says a matte medium but it's perfect for uh, decoupaging as well. You can use any decoupage medium whether it's Tim Holtz and whatever you normally would use. So let's uh, decant some onto this saucer. You always need much more than you would imagine you need. There we go. Clean that off onto my brush. The brush that I'm going to be using is this one, which is uh, I think it's a Jane Davenport one. I guess I think it's supposed to be a mermaid's tail or a fish or something. I don't know, but it's it's quite soft. It's, you know, it's, there's nothing there that's going to catch on the decoupage as I put it on and make it tear. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So here we go. So as Miss P has told you on a, a numerous occasions, 
Load your brush up with plenty of medium. Don't go in dry. Make sure you've got plenty on there. And then normally you would start in the middle and work your way out. But in here we've almost got like two separate bits. So I'm going to decoupage down that topward, start in the middle and sweep in out, and then do the other one afterwards. So hold that down there nice and tight and then just work away across. Get it down quick. Don't over faff, don't over fiddle, don't panic. That's Miss P's advice to me. Whatever happens, don't panic. There we go, that's that one down. We'll come back to it in a minute with a bit more medium because this tissue paper uh, is it's almost resistant. Is, yeah, it's almost resistant to the to the decoupage, so it takes a little while for it to to soak through. As you'll notice, we didn't put any medium down first. We're just going straight over the top and letting it soak through, uh, and then it'll attach itself to the base. Uh, both me and Miss P find that if you do decoupage and uh, put some medium down first. All it's going to do is going to stick the first space it lands and you're never going to be able to move it. Whereas if you go and dry, there's always that opportunity to perhaps pull out a little wrinkle, smooth something down. And that's just the best way to do it, we find. There we go, keeping, make sure I'm keeping plenty of medium on my brush. Going back over that again, sweeping from the middle outwards to expel any air that may have been trapped. Plenty of medium on again, come back to this one, spudge that out. And there we go. A round of applause from the audience, thank you very much. This is like uh, doing the IY without a net. There you go. And that's really sort of grounded itself into there quite well. Uh, because we teared it as close as we could, there's actually very little white showing. Um, and we'll wait till that's fully dry and see whether we actually need to paint. I suspect we probably will. Now I'm faffing now. Look, I'm going back in and faffing. Don't faff, indeed. Don't overwork it. Uh, I'll only be sorry, she says, and she's probably right. The uh, the matte medium uh, dries with a slightly shiny uh, look to it. Um, so what we'll do is once I've, I've done all the decoupage, we'll put some more of the wax finish over the top and that will harmonise the sort of shine and sheen across it all. Uh, and in case I didn't mention, I also put the polyvine wax finish over the two original spines as well to seal them in. Um, to seal that, to make sure that's not going to come to any arm. Flush with that success, we might move along a little and perhaps do another one. We'll perhaps go for the uh, the very thin little one that we did for the new big spine. Get it where we think it looks nice. I think there looks... Let's move you up a little. There we go. That's looking quite nice. Uh, oh, and then that, 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 that bird I just noticed again. Look how lovely it looks. It really looks sort of grounded in. But what we will do once the uh, matte medium is really dry, we'll take a very fine sandpaper uh, to the entire image. It, it, don't worry, it's, it's sealed in there now. It won't come to any arm. But it will really really bed it in so it really does look like it's been there forever uh, get plenty of medium on my brush again i'm going to start at the top this is so thin there's no point in starting in the middle necessarily i'm going to start at the top just going to hold it down with that finger and just brush up and i'm going to move down and do the same again get plenty more medium surprising how much you need there we go. And now we'll get that. Get plenty on there again. We'll just do that bit of a leaf there because it's sticking out further than it's a right to. 
Ooh. There we go. See that leaf there when I was doing it, it folded itself back on itself, but because we hadn't put any medium underneath, it was easily able to unfold it. Had there been medium down, it would have folded up on itself, stuck, and that would have been the end of the day. I'd have run away, had to hide in shame, etc. You probably can't see on camera but there is the odd little air bubble which you can just brush out to the side and it will end up looking nice and flat again there we go Let's lift that one up so you can have a closer look there you go that's bedded itself in perfectly uh, and the last one that we've, we've torn out is the poppies uh, the iris and the foxglove, I haven't torn them out yet, so we'll just do that one and then I'll stop you there. I'll go away, tear at the other two, put them on, uh, and then I'll pop back and we'll see whether we need to just um, put a little halo of the cream around things if it's come out a little too white. It was my intention just to do one, but well, I'm flushed with success. The images that I've chosen for, uh, I think I'll go something like that, I think it's probably a slightly more, better angle for it. Uh, the This image is slightly smaller than the others because the two in the middle are actually the outside covers because as you know it folds in on itself and it's easy to think of that as being the front but actually it's it's one of the inside flaps. I uh, need to get a bit more medium out. We've used all that up already. You'd think that was far too much, wouldn't you? But it's surprised now it disappears. And it's better to have too much, it can always go back in the pot if I don't use it. Uh, I think what we'll do is just do that little flower at the top first. Little poppy. Tone it down a little. Oop, see, see things are moving, but it doesn't matter. We can put it back to where it belongs. Without too much asshole. There we go. Get some more medium. Put in its stem. Oops. Now stop moving around and behave yourself. Is there another example of the fact that. Oh, it's being naughty. It's being naughty. Doesn't matter. We didn't put any medium down first, so. If we don't put the medium down first, we've always got that possibility of untangling itself. If you've put medium down first, that opportunity is gone. we got rid of all the air bubbles it's been a bit awkward and there we go that's the puppies so that's pretty much it for now I'll go away I'll tear out and put on the iris and the um, fox gloves uh, and then let them dry 
the, the matte medium dries relatively quickly so probably within an hour uh, they'll be dry I'll give them a little sand to bed them in uh, and then I'll put a wax finish on the top uh, and then we'll all be done so I'll pop back in a little bit and show you the the finished thing uh, prior to the wax finish and then the next time you see it after that uh, it will be in Miss P's capable hands and she'll be doing all the fancy interior so I'll see you soon bye well I'm back again after that uh, very short little pause uh, which in your time was a few seconds in mine is probably about an hour and a half uh, and now that um, matte medium's fully dried on there uh, yep it's feeling good uh, now you'll notice that since it's dried you see between the flowers and etc we've got a little bit of uh, white where the uh, the tissue paper that I printed on is showing through uh, so what we're going to do is to use a little bit of the grey paint that we've got left over from uh, doing the crackle and we shall uh, go around it putting a, a sort of halo around it and obliterate in that white before we do that we're gonna take some sandpaper to our tissue paper that sounds a bit dodgy doesn't it uh, I'll do that one because that one's been down there the longest uh, and basically we're just going to put it on and give it a little rub and you can you can go quite strongly with it and what it does is it knocks off any raised bits that there may have been left over from the tissue paying particular attention to the edges so we can sort of feather in that uh, white paper that we've got left around the outside See, it's not taking off any of the colour because that matte medium is protecting it underneath and as you put sand around you'll be able to feel the difference between where it's been done and where it hasn't uh, and it will really bed that image into that page so it really looks like it belongs and is part of it there we are that's that's really really so very smooth so what i'll do now is i'll just show you i'll paint around that one quickly that's probably the easiest ones of them i'll do that one uh, you'll get the idea and uh, then what you should do Lord. just give that a bit of a rub see all that dust's now come off that uh, there because we've already given it a coat of the uh, wax finish get rid of any dust we'll now paint around uh, that one and then when I've finished that one I shall end the video there join it to the earlier parts so you'll see it as one complete episode uh, and then I'll go away and finish those and the next time you see it after that it will be with Miss P ready to move on with the inside uh, right so I've got some paintbrushes somewhere I've chosen a little uh, flat brush uh, so I can get in and pull it away around the edges and I've got a little round one uh, which I probably won't need too much on that but when we come to some of the other images these inside bits you just need a, a round brush which is got a little point on it to get into those tighter little bits which is quite difficult to do with a big square end so we'll place that one there we'll take the top off this do is perhaps uh, shut this book up to make it easier to turn around when we get to it get a little bit of paint you can see there right yep get a little bit of paint on there no not a lot I don't need a great deal uh, and then just start going around and what this will do is just give it a little bit of a halo effect but it'll remove any of that whiteness particularly when it dries if you go into the uh, image it doesn't really matter and you can wipe it off with your finger because it's been sealed with a matte medium uh, so it's not sticking to it in any way there we go so 
what I'm doing is going into the image, pulling it away, uh, and leaving a bit of a, a little bit of an halo effect, which will then make it settle in. We want to see any of that uh, white around it, which can be a bit just visually off-putting a little, maybe. I'm going to use the round one just to go into those little bits there, into that little V's, because it's harder to get into there with a, a flat one. There we go. I mean, if I can do this, I'm sure you're all very capable. Uh, but bear in mind that this is just my take on this cover. You could do pretty much whatever you want, really. It's showing you kind of the structure of a lap book um, but to decorate the cover you could you could cover it in fabric you cover it in paper you could just paint it just leave them as they are if you really want to it's all your choice I just thought I'd show you my take on it So this is just softening softening the edges of the image just so it uh, it really does bed in and it looks like it's been there forever and almost like it's been painted directly on Let's see if I've got a brush in my mouth I shine funny and there we go in a moment because the paint's still wet it's still shiny it looks like it's still kind of the white um, but it's not and when it dries uh, you'll see the see the difference for sure. There's actually no white on this top edge, but I'm just going to put a little bit of halo in anyway, perhaps with a smaller brush. Just so it looks a bit more uniform when it dries. Uh, obviously, once it dries, it'll match the the background, uh, so you you won't really see it, and you certainly wouldn't wouldn't catch your eye as much as the uh, the white would. Excuse me, Ed, on occasion if it gets in, because it's quite hard to paint when you're not directly over something. Or well, it is for me anyway. Now you can see why I'm only going to do the one because it's going to take me quite a while to go around the others. But it's just a very nice finishing touch really. I think it's all these little things that ultimately make the difference. You just want to do something for haste and speed. You'd be doing something else anyway, wouldn't you? It's only a very thin layer of paint, so it'll almost be dry uh, at the start by the time we get round. And certainly some of those larger ones, uh, it'll definitely be dry. Because <laughs> they take me, there's, there's lots of little in and outs on the, on the flowers, the birds. At least they are pretty much a solid shape. Don't worry, little bird, I'm not calling you solid. Last, last one. Just put a thin little bit in there. And make the edge of that paper and the the white disappear and blend in. And be exactly the same process around the flowers. And there we go. Do that a little bit. Did I do that bit in there? Not sure that I did. Let's do that bit in there. 
case it turns out to be white in the proper light. And there we go. Let me put my brushes down. It's hard to speak when they're in your mouth. And let's turn it the right way around. And there we go. You just see it's starting to dry now and virtually disappearing on this side where we started. Uh, and it just really does bed them in, particularly when you compare it with this one, um, because it'd been virtually impossible to tear that tissue out. Uh, we'll just go around and fill them in and do the same sort of effect round. And that's really as much as I can show you, really. Uh, I'll carry on and paint those. Once I've finished them uh, and I'm happy with them, then I'll give it a final coat of the uh, wax finish varnish uh, and then it'll be handed over to Miss P. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed that little show of the way that I've done the journal. Uh, obviously you can construct a lap book in a similar manner using any books you like and you can decorate in any way you like as well. But uh, I've enjoyed that so thank you very much and I'll see you whenever I see you. Thank you very much. Bye.